Amanda Hollick, welcome to Show Studio. Oh, it's just great. It's like coming home here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I've just had the best day. <laughs> I want to talk to you about your late friend Isabella Bow. She's an amazing woman, and mm. obviously, um, to celebrate the Somerset House um, exhibition, we want to chat to some of her friends and her colleagues. Tell me, how did you first meet Isabella? Izzy. Um, well, I met her in London, really through Lucy Burley. Um, that was the scene. I mean, you did meet everybody then because in some sense it was certainly working in fashion. It was just a very smaller world. Mm. Um, so you really knew everybody and there was a complete kind of exchange of ideas and arguments and things like that. And not really the territorial isolation that I sense today. Mm. Um, not that I feel that because I just think my friends in the fashion industry are really, they're really great friends. and. Mm. So I always cross all those lines that, in fact, you're not meant to cross <laughs> over. Um, and I believe, actually, that everybody should collaborate. Mm. Um, and I think, well, so that's what I think. But I, Izzy, so where did I first? I just, Isabella was there. Isabella was there mm. in the front row. I was... Um, uh, I'd be working, you know, with John and things like that, and Izzy would be there, actually in quite a sort of position of power in the sense that she was an editor. Mm. So that was sort of fascinating for me because as a contemporary, I never felt that any of us had that clout. Mm. The very first time I ever met Izzy was actually now remembered. <laughs> Ta-ding! Way before that, I think I was still at Oxford or I just left Oxford University and um, there were those shoots, it was for Tatler and it was a Michael Roberts was the yeah. um, editor. Yes, editor and Izzy was the fashion assistant and I remember arriving at Tatler for for the shoot which in fact we did round the corner at Langens Brasserie with somebody called Nick Jarvis and it was for a story, Faster Faster London Girls, so it was a little bunch of us, and Izzy was there, striking, unforgettable, and completely inspiring. I can see her long distance down a <laughs> corridor, coming towards me, wearing a black ve velvet doublet and hose, white silk stockings, tights, and little black pumps, and a ruff and this incredibly translucent Helen of Aquitaine, almost marble skin, these falcon blue eyes and this slash of a red mouth. And she was laughing. Mm. I think she probably had a hat on, something there, and the little fringe. And she was totally mesmerizing. I was, I mean, the thing with Izzy, I felt power. I always felt very much like a, a little sister that she would be the one who, you know, led the riot, led the revolution, and mm. that I would follow along. Maybe I, she was definitely much braver than me. It's interesting that you say power, because I think often she's portrayed as someone with vulnerability, but I don't think... I think powerful people are vulnerable, mm. and I think that was Izzy's strength, is that she felt so much, so much, so passionately. She had a historical reference like nobody else. I know, except for Carl, actually. Um, she um, and c completely had a sense of vertical time so that you could exist in, at, in any century at that point, which mm. I think is really true. So it's a sense of sort of the ghosts of the past being present and that you could reinvent them as a, and make yourself that heroine. And mm. I think, it, uh, once again, her, her, all her fashion stories were something really empowering mm. for, for women, for girls. And her stories that she told and the, the way she constructed them and how she researched them were, you know, amazing and rigorous and, you know, heartbreaking mm. and heartbreaking that she went all that way and gave so much. Mm. Mm. We had Jeremy Langmead in yesterday and we were talking to him about working with her and he said you know, she really put herself into Everything, every yeah. She yeah. absolutely put herself there first and then 
created it again on the on the set or in the desert or wherever it was she decided to do the shoot mm. so because she was a friend to you but she also seems to from what you're saying have been a real inspiration for you she was a real inspiration she was also a friend to me so that's that's wonderful not that we were at school together or anything like that nice but certainly that scene that we were in parting and things that that's where you had the overlap mm. as a friend it was staying with her in Gloucestershire and um, hunting not that Izzy hunted um, but she was fascinated by you know darling you've got to have exactly the right shade of lipstick like blood <laughs> and no but everything was taken to its most extreme romantic potential edge which I loved mm. you say I the really word romantic I really yeah. want to pick up on that because you mentioned she's before. so romantic yeah. I mean when we working on the on the shoot with Nick I had never obviously s seen her whole voyage through cloth her story in clothes and I, in my head I had a different version that was a little bit harder mm. but when you s I saw the all of the clothes all together, which was an amazing moment. What I felt was the generosity, that huge beating heart, that huge romantic openness, mm. and something so moving as, as such a ta touching sensibility, like an exquisite sense of color and detail and beauty, which I hadn't quite understood until I saw those things, which actually in a way makes me feel really sad that I hadn't n looked after that tender side of her more. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that that's always a difficult thing with Izzy because she gave so much to her friends. Yeah, that in a way you couldn't get there. Mm. Um, she was the one who was always helping me, mm. you know, sitting in the cafe floor with Sabisha Freeberg with the three, well, two of us, Sabisha and I, going, can't take it anymore. And Izzy would be the one saying, come on, come on, stiff up a lip, girls, don't be so wet, come on. <laughs> you know, best foot forward, you can do this. Mm. But do you think it's a pity that people might, maybe not a pity, but she's so remembered for the way she presented herself, but actually with Izzy, it was never really about her, it was about giving to other people, it was about really championing those talents yeah. that she saw. Yeah, and I think that um, it, it wasn't about image, self-image manipulation and branding herself mm. at all she had Izzy had no confidence really when it came to her she was that was her vulnerability there was the power when she was working making the work makes you alive and real and in a, in a sense invulnerable because you're really present in yourself mm. and I think the pressure of then having to people rec responding only to a surface was really difficult for mm. her. Um, mm. Really difficult. And with hindsight, what you know, so many people have done is to make an art, make themselves their art, the art which in a sense they sell, was something that no Izzy never really thought of. Mm. For her, she did it unconsciously. Mm. Um, seems very authentic everything she did totally and um, I mean it's just that that rigor of absolutely getting the right color nail varnish and that I remember her wearing a preen outfit and a Philip hat mm. at nine o'clock in the morning I don't know where we were going <laughs> but she'd got it together me you know scruffalata <laughs> you know <laughs> She was extraordinary like that. She really was authentic. She was the real, real, real fashion spirit. How do you think she wanted the world to be seen? How did she want the world to be seen? Mm. By her? Or what, what did she want the world to be like? She had such this clear view. More of... romantic, you know. I think that it's that, and funny, emotional. I think that it's not a question of it just being happy, complacent, plain sailing. I don't think Izzy wanted that. She, I think she had enough, you know, of the pitch and the plunge not to want to be living there. She had the f most incredible 
earthy sense of humour, you know, much worse than mine. But <laughs> I still, you know, respond to that. There's like deeply, it's like, it's this thing was that we are all the same. We're all born and we all die. And what we do in between is really important and we mustn't be pretentious. I think, you know, is that the thing that was really, that's really sexual or we're, we are just, we are a mouth that consumes just as much as we shit. You know, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And that therefore we can, we must express ourselves in an authentic way, but mm. it's not a pretentious way, it's not a snob way. And I think that's what was, does that make sense? Yeah, that it does really, make sense. I think that was what was, I think, so liberating about Izzy. She just was the least stuck up person I know. Mm. And in fashion, you know, that can happen really easily, mm. which I think is fear, really. Mm. Tell me more about some of the projects you worked on together. Um, the money. What do we work on together? I don't think we actually collaborated together on shoots, except for doing things like Izzy would say, well, what, darling, really, I really want to do a shoot backstage at Chanel. I mean, she would just do it. Mm. It would be, it would look like chaotic nightmare that could never happen, but it happened. And, it, mm. and she brought together artistic forces outside of the fashion world and crisscrossed, I mean, she could, do collaboration long before it became a sort of user-friendly word in the in the in the fashion business, and I think that's what's exciting about her is that she did actually what I was saying before. She crossed those those territorial lines, mm. and so she'd bring in different people to different situations. I mean, what she did with Swarovski, for example. Yeah. But, I mean, she did so many things fearlessly, and only to make thing everything stronger. Not and better, benefit. not for her at all. Mm. I don't remember doing shoots for her mm. at Hills and things like that. And I and I've, I remember Izzy being on shoots with Andre Liantelli at my house, which when Andre said, Isabella, can you just scatter hay around on the floor? <laughs> and I remember Izzy just saying, no, that's, no, that's going too far. I'm just not going to do that, Andre. <laughs> no, I don't do that. Um, but she was so enthusiastic, she really got the point of what anybody was trying to express, allowing it to be different from her own kind of sensibility. I think that's what's really important. Mm. Often when people see or meet up with something that is very new, it often challenges the comfort zone inside you and it's like, mm. no, 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 I don't like that. Oh, no, 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 that makes no sense. That's a sort of cacophony. No, mm. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not even gonna run with that. But actually, when that discomfort is a really important place to be because that's when you absorb the new, the difficult. Mm. This is when you change, this is when you evolve, this is how you transform. And Izzy really had that kind of courage. She was mm. a complete Joan of Arc. Like, right, I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, you know, I'll do volume, mm -hmm. I'll do armour. <laughs> when, you know, people wouldn't take that risk because mm. it was like, whoa, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, you know, this designer's asking too much. This is, no, you've got to try it. Mm. I think that's, there is another dimension to fashion, which is feeling. Mm. And I think Izzy had that so much. It was, it's really missed. I really missed that. I really miss her right now saying, go on, Amanda, you're not really saying anything yet. <laughs> You know, it's almost like she had a wonderful whip that actually just like whipped you on, like, come on, go further, be, come on, dare, brave, break the boundaries, you know, live it, believe it. Mm. Stop being, you know, in the safety zone, you'll, you know, it's over mm. in a minute. Mm. Oh, sad though. Yeah, miss her. Yeah, I think everyone does. I yeah. can't imagine if you knew her. Well, she would never have, she never knew how great she was, never. Do you think that's what made her so great though? Maybe that's what made, no, I don't know. I think that may, that's maybe what makes some people great. Um, I hope she's right there now, laughing at us with a big smile. Is he? <laughs> <laughs>